All right, now I'm going to talk about something here in just a second. It has nothing to do with math directly, but uh, some of you are having some issues. Uh, very few. Uh, I have one or two in each class that are just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I contribute it to Max, but some of you are having problems with My Labs Plus. Number one. If your password does not work, okay, if you're having password issues, there's two, three things that you can do. One, you can try your T number. Okay, you can try your T number. The second thing you can do is do the forgot password. After an hour or so, if you do not receive an email from My Labs Plus, or in your case, My Labs Math, if you have not received an email from them regarding your password, then you need to send an email to either Dr. Anzer, Send it to both. Dr. Anzer or Miss Ward. Now I'm going to give you those two emails here in just a second because I have to look them up because I forget them. Uh, wait a minute, I got an email I just sent out. I can use that email. There they are. Um, and you can see them on my screen. Hopefully you can see my screen. Um, M A N Z U R one at T C T C dot E D U. And then Miss Ward is A Ward six at T C T C dot E D U. Now, when you email them, you need to email them your full name or your first name, middle initial, and last name. You need to email them your T number. And you need to email them, I mean, you need to let them know the class. This is, I have it written down so I don't forget. This is Math 109. Dash five one oh nine zero zero five. And then you need to state the problem. Also tell them if you have used uh, forgot my password, if you are having problems logging on uh, with your password. This is just password problems. OK, so that takes care of that. All right, then we have people that are having problems with their computer. And I know most of the time it's because of what I see it. Make sure. <coughs> OK, you can log on. But you have problems after you log on. OK, after you log on, you can't see this or the computer does this or the computer does this. Number one. Make sure you are using Google Chrome and Firefox or Firefox. Okay. If you if you go into my labs my labs math and you can't see the page, in other words, it's just a white page, and chances are this is your problem. OK, interchange them one week. Use Google Chrome the next week. Use Firefox. OK, that's something I've told students to do and it helps. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why. The second thing you might want to do in your address bar, and I'm going to show you this in my pro in my in your address bar over here. Sometimes right there, right where my cursor is. Sometimes you might see a red X 
or a red box. Okay. If you see an, an address bar right here, right here beside the star. Okay. I wish I could get it to come up, but usually I tell you what, let me try this. This is my, let me try my labs plus, see if it'll come up. I'm going to pull up my labs plus instead of and hit sign in. And of course it don't do it, but it'll be right here in the right hand side. Let me hit one and I don't have. I'm looking to see if it'll do it. OK, it doesn't do it, but it'll be a little box or a little X right here. You need to right click on it. Need to right click. And either hit allow cookies or whatever, allow this or unsafe script, allow unsafe script. Um, or allow uh, pop ups. One of those. OK, now I have been using my math lab and my labs plus since like 2001. OK, I've been using it for a long time and I've never seen a pop up come up on my labs plus or my math lab or anything. So any of this, I can tell you your computer is fine. I've been using it at home and in, in my office for years. OK, so if you see if you having problems and you see a red X or a red box in your address bar on the right side, right click on it and just allow stuff. C. Try another computer. I tell students go in the labs. Now you some of y'all are in BFE. I don't know where you are, but you may have another computer in the room, especially if that computer is a non Mac computer. Try it on a non Mac computer and see if you can get in. OK, so try another computer, preferably a different brand. OK, so if you're using a Mac, and you're having problems, go into a non Mac and see if you have the same problems. Also, I have found, and this is, I'm sorry, I have found that people that don't use Blackboard, they don't have any problems. They don't have as many problems. So that's why I put it in Teams. I put the link in Teams, and then the website is that my Math Lab Mastering, my math lab mastering website okay i have found that if you go through these two you don't have as many problems now i want some input from y'all on anything that i've discussed can y'all add or can y'all give me more problems that y'all are having somebody raise their hand anybody Ms. Hollister, you got your hand raised. Is there anything you want to add? OK, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. We OK, is there any problems that y'all uh, did? Any of y'all have any of these problems? No, I, I've got a I've got a MacBook and I just go through Blackboard every time and it works fine. You are kidding me. I have had yeah, so many people call me and tell me that their computer's blowing up. Their house is flooded. I mean, I'm getting all kinds of emails about that can't get on. I don't understand what the problem is. That's why I'm trying to get this out there. All right. Uh, Anybody yeah. else, Mr. Abdul? The thing is, I'm in the, the thing is, I'm in the middle of nowhere and I still can get on just by going to my labs math dot, like just to the, just to the Pearson website. And I've got a MacBook. Well, that's yeah, because you're in that Russia. Be that's why. No, open. I'm just kidding. Uh, so let that. me, uh, Mr. Serkovich or, or Justice, what, um, uh, where, where you caught, where you live? Tell me about where you live. Well, I, I live in Houston, but I'm in Oklahoma. I'm in Chickasha, Oklahoma, which is like a small town of like 5,000 people. Okay. That's a town I'd love living in. Um, 
<laughs> have y'all been hit by the hurricane yet? Because y'all right there in Texas, y'all being affected because that's a little bit, y'all are a little bit west of that, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, my, my mom and brother are down there right now. And uh, it, Beaumont is where we get our energy from. So uh -huh. Our power comes from Beaumont. And they didn't really get hit that bad. It, it more shifted east. So it kind of hit uh, Lake Charles really bad. But it, it just yeah. scraped over Beaumont. Well, I hope I hope everybody evacuated like they're supposed to, and dumb dumb butts stay in the path of a hurricane. If they have the if they have the ability to evacuate and don't, then they're on their own. But I hope the ones that yeah, evacuated I, got out. Yeah, especially because I, I was I was on Snapchat last night watching everything that was happening through the hurricane, uh -huh. and some people were just standing on the rooftops of uh, parking garages just outside, and I'm like, yeah, what the heck? That's so dumb. You know, you 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 put your finger up against nature, it'll get broke. But anyway, <laughs> uh, anybody anybody else? Did anybody get any of these problems or anything that I mentioned? Okay. All right. Does anybody have any problems I didn't mention with my labs plus? Or I say my labs plus, but it's my labs math for 109. And by the end of next year, all math classes will be my labs math it's just a newer version of my labs plus is all it is okay nobody's got any questions okay so let's move on okay looking at your syllabus and we're going to look at that right now because that's the most important page and for everybody to keep up i didn't see now i did see one homework question sent in but i'm not going to cover it yet because we are Hold on. Oh, I'm on the wrong. I'm on my lab plus. Sorry. Uh, let me get to 109. Here we go. Um, we are we are starting 1.1 and 1.2 today, so I might get to that question by the end of class. Uh, graphs of functions. We, we're talking about that now. Functions and models, linear functions, and equations of lines. So I covered just parent graphs the other day. So now we're going to talk about linear. We're going to talk about linear and we're going to talk about equations of lines and functions. So with that being said, I'm going to go back to the handy dandy um, document cam and we're going to talk about linears because that's the first first type of of uh, function that we've got. Now to see if anything is a function or not. If it is a function, how do you know? Well, you draw a vertical line through it. And that's called the vertical line test. The vertical line test is used whenever you want to see if something is a function. Vertical line test tells you if the function you see is a function. So you draw a vertical line through the function. And if it crosses one time, then it is a function. Two times, no. So that's the vertical line test. It's usually the first thing I show because that's the first type of question you might see in functions. Is it a function or not? And what is a function? A function is like an ice machine. OK, let's talk about an ice machine. And y'all have all seen an ice machine before. I've all been in a daggum hotel before. So look something like that. I'm not a daggum, it looks like a piano, but anyway, that's an ice machine. Input is H2O. Output is ice. Now let me ask you a question, and this is the function. If I put a funnel, if I cut this line right here and I put a funnel, not that any of y'all know what a funnel is. That's a joke. And I put a funnel there and I pour, pour in five gallons of lime Kool-Aid. If, if I put in five gallons of lime Kool-Aid, what am I going to get out of the function? I'm going to get five gallons 
of green ice. Everybody with me? If I put in five gallons of cherry Kool-Aid, I'm going to get five gallons of red ice. So it's safe to say that whatever I put in, I'm going to get what? I'm going to get out. Input. Output. X. Y. Domain. Range. The only thing that doesn't change is the function. The ice machine doesn't do anything but sit there. The function does not have anything to do with the domain and range. OK, the domain and range is affected by two things. One, it's affected by the actual function. In other words, the function itself dictates what numbers can be used. What do you mean by that? Well, if I give you f of x is equal to x, or f of x is equal to x squared, or f of x is equal to x to the third, or so on, I can use any number I want to. So if I can use any number I want to, then the domain is equal to all real numbers. I can plug in one half. I can plug in negative four. I can plug in negative 100. I can plug in positive 1000. I can plug in any number I want to. Well, then when does the function dictate? Well, when you have a rational function. When you have a radical function with an even exponent, why? Because you can't take the rat, you can't take the even exponent of a negative. You can't take the fourth root of a negative. And a log. I can't take the log of a negative number. So if I get a function that's one of these, my domain is going to be affected because I can't have zero in the denominator. I can't have a negative in a radical, even radical, or a logarithm. So in these cases of functions, my domain is affected because I cannot use certain numbers, whereas up here, I can use any number. Now, the reason I'm explaining this is because some people go throughout K through 12 and they graduate high school and they don't know the difference between domain and range. And they don't understand what domain and range is. Domain is what you put into the ice machine. Range is what you get out of the ice machine. The function is the ice machine. Now, does the function change? Well, let's say that the let's say that this is a sensitive ice machine and that if you put anything in the ice machine with sugar in it, it'll blow up. Can I put Kool-Aid in this machine? Y'all, that, that's not rhetorical. I'm asking y'all for input here. Can I put, if I can't, let's say that this machine is a sensitive machine and that it cannot take anything with sugar in it. Can I use Kool-Aid in this machine? No. 
No, uh, you cannot. So my domain is affected because this function dictates I cannot use sugar. Can I put Coca-Cola in there? No. Can I put, you probably can put Diet Coke, but you probably couldn't put Coca-Cola, but who wants Diet Coke ice cubes in their bourbon? Nobody. All right, so if you put Coke in here, then <laughs> you're not going, it's not going to work because the function is dictating. And this is when the function dictates. Right here. So when you have a function, you need to look at it and ask yourself, is this function dictating to the domain? Because what, de what depends on the domain? The range, because it is the dependent variable. And what is the domain? It's the independent variable. So the, if you don't have a domain, you don't have a range. Now, I'm, 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 I'm kind of going around the world here, but I'm going to come back in just a second. OK, what else dictates the domain? The teacher or directions? The second thing that affects the domain, I'm just going to put instructions. And that can mean by the teacher or by the directions of the question. If I say f of x is equal to x to the fifth power, the domain of this function is all real numbers, but what if I say x such that x is between zero and five. Then I have just set the domain by direction. So therefore, the range is affected by the direction, by direction. So zero to the fifth power is zero. So I'm going to put a little X and Y here, and that's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five. There's my Kool-Aid. And now I'm going to put out my ice cubes. So zero to the fifth power is zero. One to the fifth power is one. Two to the fifth power is 32 and so on. Somebody give me five to the fifth power, please. It's going to be a BA number, but somebody do that in your calculator for me. Three thousand one twenty five. Three thousand one twenty five. So my domain. Is zero to five inclusive because we can use zero and five because of the equal signs right here. And then the range. Is from zero to thirty one twenty five. So. The two times that domain is affected is by the problem itself, meaning, oh, we can use anything up here, or we can't use some things because it'll blow up the function, or by the directions. F of X is equal to X to the fifth, and then the directions or the teacher says, we're just going to use zero to five. Okay. So that's how domain works. So with a straight line, you know, it's kind of easy to see the domain and range, but let's say that we do f of x or y, whichever one you want to say, is equal to x plus two. Well, in this case, you're going to have a linear line We've got a y-intercept of two. How do you know that? Well, back in pre-algebra and algebra one and algebra two that you had before you had this class, you discussed that this is y is equal to mx 
plus B, and B is the y-intercept. So you knew that before you came into this class, all right? You know that one is M. You know the slope of one, that's a 45 degree angle. So technically you could draw this line without even doing any math. Y-intercept is two. And you've got a one to one function. And your line looks something like that. That's a linear line because X is to the first power, as we discussed in the parent graphs. So that's one method of doing a graph. Another method is to do the chart plot method. Y is equal to X plus two. You always pick five numbers. Negative one or negative two, negative one, zero, one and two. Negative two plus two is zero. Negative one plus two is one. Zero plus two is two, three, and four. And you plot those points. That's one method. That's the first method of graphing. It's also the most used for nonlinear. Okay. This method right here is the one that you use when you're doing a parabola or anything else. Okay, the second method is the intercept method. I'm doing a review right here of graphing, if you're wondering. Okay, I see, hold on a second. I see some activity with the chat. Make sure nobody has a question. Okay, nobody has a question. Okay, there's a. Yeah, great. Yes, Mr. Melnick, yeah. I got it on my phone. Priority one message I just downloaded Office. I just downloaded Office on my phone and it did it on its own. But yeah, it's great because any messages that come. Um, hold on, my son just texted me. Um, any messages that come through, you can get on your phone. It works out real good. OK, I'll shut up. Let me get out of that. Now, second method. The second method is called the intercept method. Usually you use the intercept method when Y is not by itself. Why not by itself? Okay, Y is not by itself. Oh, something else I need to make, uh, uh, talk about your attention or I don't know how to say it, but bring to your attention. Um, tomorrow is the last day to be counted. OK, now most of y'all have been here to the two weeks. If you don't attend your class in two weeks, the system will drop you. OK, I need to tell you that because I've told all my other classes yesterday and today. Tomorrow, after tomorrow's classes, if you've spent two weeks and you haven't gone to class or what it you haven't been uh, you know counted now luckily we only have to take attendance one time so if you've been counted one time during those two weeks you're okay but if you haven't been counted two times in the last two weeks then you might get dropped but i mean you will get dropped by the system and that depends on if your teacher takes attendance and I take attendance because the beginning of the semester, they make us take attendance. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, I don't think I have any problems. I think I have three or four students that haven't shown up at all. Uh, but I check attendance every day and I'll check attendance here in just a minute. And but I want to tell you for your other classes, if you haven't attended your other classes in two weeks, you better attend tomorrow or today because you're going to get dropped if you don't if you don't, you know, I'm just telling you that. OK, all right, so let's let's do an example. 2x plus 4x is equal to 8. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a BA table. And I'm going to put X intercept here. And Y intercept here. And I'm going to put zero for y and zero for x and that's true whether you're in marketing business 
algebra, calculus, physics, biology, chemistry, it doesn't matter. Whenever you want to find the x-intercept, you plug in zero for y. Whenever you want to find the y-intercept, you plug in zero for x. Is that something that everybody should know backwards and forwards? Yes. If you're in algebra two or calculus and you don't know that zero in the y, the zero for y gives you x, you need to write it down because you're going to see it again no matter what class you're in, unless you're in underwater firefighting or if you're in history or psychology. Even in psychology, you might find the x and y intercept on a graph. So even in psychology, you might see it. Um, but history and English and literature, I doubt you'll see it. But, you know, something that, that's the rule you should know. And if you don't know it, you need to make sure you know it from here on out. So I put the, oh, that's supposed to be a Y, sorry. 2X plus 4Y is equal to 8. 2X plus 4Y is equal to 8. That 0 goes down right there, takes out that term. Well, 4 times 0 is 0. And that 2X takes out, I mean, that 0 takes out the 2X term. So you're left with 2x is equal to 8, x is equal to 4. And 4y is equal to 8, y is equal to 2. And that's how you use the second method of graphing. Again, it's a linear line because x is to the first power. Third method. Third method is called building a line. It's usually the one that's taught the most because you don't have to do any math. Build a line. It's usually when Y is by itself. And it's also used, I tell students to use when you have M is equal to a fraction. Now you don't have to do that. You can use method one if M is a fraction, uh, but these two, that's what I use. So example, Y is equal to negative three-fourths X plus two. First thing you do is you find the Y intercept. Y intercept is equal to zero comma two. Two, find your slope, sign of the slope. Sign is negative, therefore the trace line goes left to right down. Three, three over four is vertical over horizontal. Now, once you have those three pieces of information, draw a graph, you plot the y-intercept, you draw a trace line. I'm going to draw the trace line with a with a pen because it's real thin and it's supposed to go left to right down. And then I just draw my points. So three up, one, two, three, two over, or four over, one, two, four. Three up, one, two, three, four. Three down, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And there's your line. Those are the three methods of graphing. Three methods of graphing with number one being the one that you're going to use for nonlinear. So there's number three, there's number two, and here's number one. And number one, is the one that you're going to use for all your nonlinear graphs. So let's talk about a little bit more of graphing before we move on to nonlinear. And that is y is equal to mx plus b, m is equal to delta y over delta x, which means y sub 2 minus y sub 1 
over x of 2 minus x of 1. Now remember, this is a review section. Chapter 1 and the review section, this is all review. So a lot of you should remember this. y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. That's the point slope equation. You got two points. You can find the equation using the point slope equation. This is how you calculate slope. This is how you find an equation. Because I have some idea that there probably be a homework question in 1.1 through 1.4 that will ask you to either calculate the slope or to find an equation of a line. Okay. And remember that if you have if y is equal to a number by itself, it's parallel to the x-axis. That means it's a horizontal line, which means the slope is equal to zero. If y, if x is equal to a number, it's parallel to y, and it's a vertical line, which means slope is undefined. And the last thing, if the slopes are equal and you have different y-intercepts, then you have parallel lines. If you take the slopes and multiply them together and you get negative one, then you have a perpendicular line. Now, I've just went over a whole section of, of graphing. Uh, basically, graphing linear equations. That's what I just went over. Anybody got any questions so far? Y'all never heard of underwater firefighting? It's like basket weaving, you know. Kind of like some of the degrees that some of our politicians get. Global studies. I'm going to tell you something. If you ever go into something and it has studies behind it, that means underwater firefighting slash basket weaving. That means they water down a degree so you can pass it and not get a job because the degree is worthless. Just something for you to know. Okay. Any questions so far? Now, that is how you graph a linear equation. Now, as I said, before we started, if you look, we're basically at 1.3 right now. Okay. We're at 1.3 equations of lines. I'm going to go to that 1.4 homework and we're going to see what kind of problems you got. So, Let's go to assignments. Let's go to, okay, I also noticed something else. Okay, there's three types of people in the room. There's the people that don't listen, the people that do listen, and the people that are not sentient. So I'm talking to the people that listen. People that listen, if I cover 1.2, 1.3, then that's what you're responsible for before the next class. Now, I'm going to go right quick, and if you don't send questions, then I'm sorry. I'm going to assume that you know the material. Nobody sent questions except for one person. That's why I'm moving on, okay? Some of y'all hadn't done any work at all. I don't understand that. I know. The dog ate your computer, and you had five dead grandmothers, and this happened, and this blew up, and all this other stuff. So I'm not going to entertain any of that because that – to me is ridiculous, but I am going to that one question that was sent. Oh God, what a surprise. Tri-County, log me out. Okay, here we go. 109. Ooh, somebody sent one just now. Wow, thank you. Uh, this is the one that was sent. This is 1.135, meaning that 35 in the book, if you go to 1.1 in the book, and you pull up the homework section in the book, this problem is similar 
to number 35. So those of you that have a book, go to 1.1, look at the homework section, and look at number 35, and that's what this problem looks like. Or you can go to your online homework, and it looks like number nine. So what I tell students, 1.1, 35, slash nine. You need to put that in your notebook. 1.1, 35, slash nine, and write down the problem. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on one second. This one down here. Well, 1.1 comes first, so we'll do that one. Okay. And this problem I haven't seen. Let's see. A conversion chart gives the following steps to convert Celsius temperature to Fahrenheit temperatures. Multiply by 9, divide by 5, add 32. If F represents a Fahrenheit temperature, because you are converting Celsius to what? To Fahrenheit. So that means that you're going to be given a Celsius. Okay, I'm just saying that. We're just thinking. If F represents a Fahrenheit, so F is equal to C plus 32 divide multiplied by 9 fifths. That's basically what it means. Uh, temperature and C represents corresponding. Write an equation. I just told you the answer. Sorry. So here we go. Handy dandy document cam. Minimize down. Where, where are we at? This is 1.1. This is a homework question that was sent in just now. Somebody's working on their homework in class. That's okay. 1.1 35 slash 9 in your book in your online homework. I'm going over a question in 1.1 and 1.2 because I've covered that material. OK, this question, this this is not a good test question. I don't I don't I didn't even know this question existed. Uh, what was that? Are you, oh, I, oh, I are you OK, Mr? I think I think he he's, somebody's taking over him. I think he's I think there's a Russian spy down there in Oklahoma. I'm working around. All right. Working around. It's not my fault. <laughs> okay. Well, you need to mute, okay? Because people are going to think you're crazy, Justice. All right. People are going to think you're on drugs <laughs> or something. All right. So here we go. 1.1, 35 slash 9. Let me go back to it. So that question is going to look like F is equal to some form of C. OK, this is Celsius. This is F. And it says that I need to add 32 to the Celsius. So F is equal to C plus 32. And then I'm going to multiply that and divide by 5. So that would be F is equal to 9 fifths C plus 32. That should be your answer. So this is a homework question. OK. OK, there it is. I'm sorry. I'm not no, no, not the parentheses. F is equal to. Sorry, nine fifths C plus 32. There you go. Sorry, I messed that up. There you go. OK, so. I've never seen that question before, so that must be a new question that they put into 109. Um, is it a homework question? Yes. Is it a test question? No. Okay, because I'm talking about graphing, so that means that graphing is what I'm going to test you on. Um, let's go to another question. This is 1.1 27 slash 4. 1.127 slash 4. This is a test question. So you might want to write this one down, put a star beside it. Here's the, I'll draw it while y'all are drawing it. Here's the graph. I'm going to blow the graph up a little bit. And this is negative 30. And this is 10. And that's 5. And this is negative 25, looks like. 
and this is positive 20. So the function looks something. You have a work email. Are we supposed to be seeing what you're doing? Not yet. There we go. I'm leaving it open so you can draw it on your paper. Okay. Now I'm on. There's my. There's a drawing right there. Okay. I'll try to fit it in there like this. Okay. Now, where is the domain? Well, I'm gonna take my handy dandy highlighter out. Somebody tell me what variable tells me domain X or Y? X. X, because that's your that's your Kool Aid. So I'll take my X and I mark. What values of X are on this function? That's your domain. And the domain. And I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Domain is equal interval notation negative 25 comma 20. Now somebody tell me in your years of years of algebra that you've had. What would make these parentheses? Anybody know? Well, I was actually just about to ask you, what's the difference between the bracket and the parentheses? Okay. Brackets. Closed circle. The solid line. All mean that, which means inclusive. What does inclusive mean in what does that mean in algebra? I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me pull this up. So y'all can see everything. Somebody tell me what inclusive means in algebra. OK, y'all. Uh, Y'all are a very talkative bunch. It means that you can use that number in the function. So I can use 20, negative 25 in the function, and I can use 20. What's the opposite of inclusive? Exclusive. Good job. Thank you for the introduction. Open circle and dash line. That means these two guys, which means exclusive. So if I had open circles on the end of this graph, if I had open circles, that would mean parentheses. Infinity, can you touch infinity? No, it gets parentheses. Can you touch negative infinity? No. It gets parentheses. So that's what the difference. That's the difference between. Parentheses and brackets. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's right, Ms. Sanchez, you are correct. Inclusive means including the number. Y'all are winners. Next question. Oh, range. Range, I'm going to use my orange marker, and the range goes from negative 30 to 5. So I take my handy dandy orange marker, and my range is from negative 30 to 5. And that is a test question, so make sure you mark that one. I'd love to ask these on test. Question, great, complaint. All right, let's move on to the other homework question, and then I can move on to 1.3 and 1.4. Oh my, so I did those two. And this question is 1.2. And it's 1.2. It's 
got a video uh, one. This is number 11 in your uh, homework, number 11 in 1.2 homework. And it says. Uh, the number of students in thousand of blah, 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 blah. I can't read that in a country in a country can be described as. Oh, we got a quadratic here. Hot dogs. Let's write down the quadratic. Gmail. So. S is equal to point zero two eight. You have a T squared. Gmail. Minus 4.89t plus 227.87, where t is the number of years after 1990, and s is the number of students. OK, now what they're saying is you use the graphing utility to graph the function in the viewing window. So we're going to take our handy dandy graph. This is a calculator drill. That's what this is. Make sure you can use your calculator. I'm getting emails left and right. I wonder where they're going. All right, so pull up your handy dandy calculator. And I want to clear that, so I got to turn the stat plot off. Second stat plot off. There we go. And y is equal to point zero two eight x squared minus four point eight nine. X plus 227.87 and graph. I hate this calculator. When you put in an exponent, it's supposed to automatically. This one don't do that. Oh, heck no. This one, it keeps writing in the exponent. Damn Russians. There, you have to hit the right arrow key. OK, I'm on 1.2. 1.2, I don't forgot the number. It was a video question. Uh, I, I'll go back and look at it in a second. Um, minus 4.89 X plus 227.87. Sorry about that. And graph. And there, that's what it looks like when you don't put a window on it. We know it's a quadratic, but with that small a number right there, it looks like a daggum satellite dish. It's real shallow. Okay. So we're going to have to go by their rules. And they say we need to, this is number 11 on 1.2, Miss Hollister. And they say 0, 017, 0, 0300. So go to the window. I'm looking for the window. Where's the window? There it is. And I'm going to type in 0, 017, 0, 0300. And zero three hundred and hit graph. There you go. Okay, now they say use the graph to project the number of students in two thousand six. Well, what is two thousand six? Well, subtract 1990 from 2006. What is that number? 
16. Mm -hmm. So you can either punch in 16, you can use trace and find X is equal to 16. Or you can go to the table and find X is equal to 16. That's the closest I can get. So I go to the table, hit second table, and find X is equal to 16. And you feel good about yourself. 156.8. So this is a calculator drill. And they're going to ask you, what about in the year 2020? They're going to ask you to do that or whatever. So 156.8. And I don't know if they want 156. Or one it says round to three decimal places. So that's 156 point. OK, I got 156.8. So you might have to plug it in. OK, yeah, you might have to plug it in or blow it up a little bit more. Well, let's go ahead and do a final check. There it is. 156.798. Now, the way that you would do that is you go back to the window. Go to window. I mean, table set right here. Second table set. No, second table set. There we go. And change this to point zero zero one. And now go to the table. Second table. There you go. And now we're going to 16, which will take a while. We might need to go a few more decimal places. But it'll take you a while to get there. And just go down to 16. Eventually you'll get there. The easiest way to do it is just plug it in the calculator. That's the easiest way to do it. OK, that's a calculator drill. That could be a test question, but I'm not I'm, I'm not really, you know, static on you being able to twirl your calculator around your finger like a basketball. So I'm you know, that may be a test question, but I doubt it. OK, so that's one point two homework. So those are the three homework questions that were sent to me. So now we're going to move on. Let's look at the next section, which is 1.3. And the next section of 1.3, let me look at that. Well, where he is? Let me see what 1.3 questions look like. Let me find some math questions. I don't. OK, there we go. OK, good. That's we already covered this. Um, give the slope and y intercept. Well, the y intercept is three. Slope is four. I already showed you that y is equal to mx plus b. I'm looking to see there's OK, here's one. This is one where you got to calculate the slope. OK. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you to calculate the slope because that's what they're asking the rate of change. Go ahead and make a note. Rate of change is a 25 cent word for slope. So go ahead and write this one down. This is out of 1.3 homework. It's number 27. I'm just showing you that I've covered everything in 1.3 pretty much. 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3. So here we go. Pull up the handy dandy. Document cam. The two points are and I'll draw them on a graph just so you can see what they look like. Negative four and eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And six, negative seven. One, two, three. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there is my line. Now we're going to go ahead and kill two birds with one stone. We're going to find the slope of this line. 
and we're going to find the equation for this line. And that way that'll take care of two homework questions at once. OK. So the slope of this line, also called the rate of change, is going to equal slope is equal to delta y over delta x, the change in y over the change in x, which is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Well, which way do we read? We read from left to right. So this point right here is negative 4, comma 8, and that's x sub 1, y sub 1. And this is 6, negative 7, and that's x sub 2, y sub 2. Plug and chug. Well, before I plug and chug, I'm writing parentheses. And let y'all know, I've got three and a half degrees, and I still use parentheses. Uh, how many degrees do y'all have? And do you use parentheses? Think about that for a minute. I got three and a half degrees, three and three quarters, and I'm still using parentheses. I have students that won't use parentheses because it's beneath them. But when they get the problem wrong, that's the first thing I ask them. Did you use parentheses? No. OK. Now I'm going to plug and chug. Y sub 2 is negative 7. Y sub 1 is 8. X sub 2 is 6, x sub 1 is negative 4. I guarantee you somebody's going to get this wrong. And that's going to give us negative 15 over 6 plus 4 is 2. And I guarantee you somebody didn't get negative 15 halves. You don't have to say anything, but that's why you got to use the parentheses. So now that I've got my slope, I'm going to find an equation. So I use my point slope equation. Y minus Y sub 1 is equal to M times X minus X sub 1. I've got 15 halves, but I'm going to use a point. I'm going to use this one because you got a negative and a positive. It really doesn't matter which one you pick. So here's my X sub 1, Y sub 1. So y minus parentheses equals m times x minus parentheses. And y minus 8 is equal to negative 15 halves times x minus a negative 4. And that's going to give us y minus 8 equals negative 15 halves times x plus 4. Now you just solve for y. Mr. So that's going to be y minus 8 is equal to negative 15 halves x minus, well that 4 is going to cancel with that 2, so 15 times 2 is negative 30. And bring the 8 over y, is equal to negative 15 halves x plus negative 30 plus 8, negative 22, something like that. And of course, my, my graph could be off negative 22 be down here. I'm probably off because I'm not using graph paper. OK, unless I got a sign wrong there. Now, they didn't they didn't ask for that in the question. The only thing they asked for is the slope. The reason I did both of these is to kind of jar your memory and kind of let you say, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember doing that. OK, that's what you should be saying. Finding the slope and the equation. 
Now we we'll type in negative 15 halves here. Negative 15 divided by 2. And we got it wrong. OK, I got it wrong. What did I get wrong? Negative 7 minus 8 is negative 15. 6 plus 4 is 10, dork. I'm so stupid. Sorry, talking to myself. Y'all should have said something. Appreciate the interaction, class. 6 plus 4 is 10. I don't know why I said 2. I guess parentheses don't help. So 15 over 10 is negative, what, 3 over 2? That would make life a whole lot easier. So my bad. Somebody should have said something. So now I got y minus 8 is equal to negative 3 halves times x minus a negative 4. And y minus 8. Y minus 8 is equal to negative 3 halves x. Well, that's going to be a plus 4, but that's going to be a minus. And then 3, let's see, that 2, 3 times 2 is 6. Somebody check my math there. It should be a negative 6. And y is equal to negative 3 halves x plus 2. Now that looks better. Sorry about that little gaff. Well, it's a good thing that I the good thing I show you. I'm telling you, you can make a mistake here. And even I, with two and three and a half degrees and using parentheses, I made a mistake. Okay? But you don't need parentheses. Whatever. So I'm going to type this in. And now I should get negative three halves. There we go. <sighs> Can I just quit? Are y'all just not going to talk to me today? Did I say something to offend y'all? <laughs> no, no. Y'all just don't want to talk to me? Is that it? There we go. Well, the question on the screen is different than the question right here. But I'm, I'm on the same question. It's different. Oh, okay. That's fine. So y'all are doing your homework as I, as I show you. Okay. That's yeah, fine. I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. If we're doing homework problems, I don't mind for y'all to work on homework. The same homework problem. Don't be doing your own thing. And that's another thing. I, I'm starting to see people doing their own thing. Um... That's not a good thing, okay? I want to tell y'all something. Y'all are not in control of this classroom. I am. I could skip 1.4, and some of y'all did 1.4, and, okay? I would not get too far ahead of me, okay? You may have written the book. You may not have written the book. But the point is, I could skip a section just because I want to. Does everybody understand that? Hopefully y'all understand that. All right, next. And I'm gonna stop after this one because some of y'all start convulsing. Um, uh, I, 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 yeah, go ahead. So no. the, the question that I'm doing is uh, uh, 0.03 and 25 on a graph. And okay, I, don't describe it to me. Hit ask my instructor and send it to me. Right uh, quick. Uh, We'll finish yours. We'll we'll have yours. We'll do yours as the last question. And I'm doing a 1.3 work, so that means that y'all should be working on 1.1 through 1.3 homework for next week or for Tuesday. Okay, save. Let me go to his math question, and that's 109. Okay, it hasn't shown up yet. Have you sent it? I'm, I'm just typing the question. Well, go ahead and send it to me. Hit ask my instructor and send it to me, and that way I can show it to everybody. Let me know when you send it. I, I just sent it. 
Okay, there it is. Okay, this is 1.327 slash 10. Okay, this one says zero and three. So I'm gonna pull up my, okay. Okay, we got music. Zero, three, three, five. So my slope M is equal to Y sub two minus Y sub one over X sub two minus X sub one. X of one, Y sub one, X of two, Y sub two. Five minus three over three minus zero. I got two thirds. So now I'm gonna pick, well, I'm gonna pick zero three because that's easier math. M is equal to two thirds. Y minus three is equal to two thirds times X minus zero. Y minus three is equal to two thirds X. Y is equal to two thirds X plus three. Now, I don't know what the question's asking, but I know for my test, I want you to be able to do both. Okay, I want you to be able to calculate the slope, and I want you to be able to give me the equation for the line. Okay, and we will end on that note. I'll leave that on the board there for a couple more seconds. And so that while that is anybody got a question? Okay, I need you to mute. If you're not asking a question, please mute because it sounds like you're asking a question. Okay, all right. Let me get out of this and go to your handy dandy uh i'm trying to get there just hold on probably doesn't log me out anyway oh i don't believe it that didn't log me out 109 the only person that i need to worry about as far as attendance goes is hold on say i stopped the recording